ഡൽഹിയിൽ നിന്നും എൻ്റെ അഭിനന്ദനങ്ങൾ വെരി ഗുഡ് മോർണിംഗ് ടു ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ഐ എം ഡോക്ടർ ഉമാ ഹരിഹരൻ ആൻഡ് ഐ എം ഗോയിങ് ടു ടോക്ക് ആൻഡ് ഹൈബ്രിഡ് ഓ ടീസ് സ്പെസിഫിക്കലി ദ ഫിറ്റ് ഫോൾസ് ആൻഡ് എമർജൻസീസ് എസ്പെഷ്യലി റിലേറ്റഡ് ടു ഇൻ്റർവെൻഷൻ ന്യൂറോ റേഡിയോളജി ആൻഡ് എം ആർ ഐ ഹൈബ്രിഡ് ഓ ടി ഇസ് ബേസിക്കലി എ സർജിക്കൽ തിയേറ്റർ എക്യൂപ്ഡ് വിത്ത് അഡ്വാൻസ് മെഡിക്കൽ ഇമേജിംഗ് ഡിവൈസസ് ലൈക് സി ആം സി ടി സ്കാൻസ് എം ആർ ഐ എൻഡോസ്കോപ്സ് അൾട്രാസൗണ്ട് ആൻഡ് ഡയന സി ടി along with facility to give anesthesia and monitoring devices interventional cardiology interventional neuroradiology and mri guided procedures can be performed along with several polytrauma as well as uh, minimally invasive thoracic surgery and natural orifice surgeries can be performed now this is a list of procedures which can be performed in a hybrid theater most of these are cardiovascular and cardiothoracic procedures along with neurovascular procedures like coil embolization cerebral balloon angioplasty and combined cerebral and spinal procedures it can also be used for high risk obstetrics and orthopedic trauma the basic design and guidelines for hybrid theaters require several criteria to be fulfilled the most important of which is the space requirement along with imaging equipment radiation protection efficient work flow design acoustic considerations and environmental restrictions the 2018 fgi hospital guidelines requires a hybrid or to meet the clear floor area clearance and storage requirement for imaging equipment contained in the room the size of the hybrid or is determined by two components mainly the four zones which are required for the operating rooms and the clearances which are required for imaging equipment to be installed it establishes a minimum area of 48 square feet for the anesthesia setup There are several advantages of the hybrid OR because it enables the performance of minimally invasive surgery which is cost saving for the patient and time saving for the clinician everything under one roof it is a modern state of the art facility with multi speciality integration in a sterile environment but there are several pitfalls the most important of which are the space constraints which can be quite difficult especially in already established or overcrowded hospital environment imaging modalities require huge space and more personal than the normal or with a team of minimum 8 to 20 people must be accommodated the room size also needs to be adequate with separate technical room preparation area with lead shielding and reinforcement of the floor and ceiling to hold on to the additional weight of machines which are usually hanging from the top in most of these hybrid ot's apart from this the anesthesiologist has to face several risk of working outside their normal operating theater environment and hence you must involve all the stakeholders from the planning stage itself the utilities are immense a true hybrid or includes a built in cm x-ray machine ct scan or mri with high resolution real time imaging allowing for minimally invasive procedures for better lesion localization and immediate care or immediate resection in the event of any problem quicker patient recovery and conversion to open procedure is also possible with the presence of anesthesia personnel in converting to a full ga no critical time is lost in transportation or equipment changing and hence high precision minimally invasive surgery is made possible Now emergencies in hybrid OTs can be divided into those related to the procedures for example an intracerebral hemorrhage which can occur during an interventional neuroradiology or those related to anesthesia administration especially related to hemodynamic instability and sometimes airway emergencies then related to drugs administered during the procedure like contrast and anticoagulants then related to airway complications specifically which is very important for the anesthesiologist to address also related to pre existing comorbidities of the patient for which we may not have adequate time to optimize and related to miscellaneous conditions like hypothermia radiation toxicity and acoustic damage airway emergencies can be catastrophic and we need to understand that this kind of a setup gives us 
tremendous opportunities both to err as well as to improve so we need to understand that the uh, difficulties can be trifold for anatomical difficulty physiological and situational difficulty for anatomical difficulty we must perform a rapid airway examination for predicting the difficult airway as well as optimizing the patient and the anesthesiologist position for physiological difficulty we must ensure hemodynamic and metabolic stability of the patients especially those with poor cardiovascular reserve and ensured that the patient is not full stomach for situational difficulty even with an experienced airway manager the situational difficulties can lead to difficult airway because he or she is unable to co uh, communicate uh, effectively with his teammates because of strange environment and a huge ot setup and hence the roles and the tasks must be explicitly delegated pre operatively itself with excellent in house coordination as well as control of background noise a mnemonic has been set up to take care of such emergencies in the form of prepare mnemonic p is for pre oxygenate and position r is for reset and resist e for examine and explicit p for formulating the plans the plan a and plan b a is for adjusting and attention r is for remain and review and e is for exit and explore now coming to interventional neuroradiology this has developed tremendously in the last few years especially because of less tissue trespass and better post operative recovery but it is very challenging for the anesthesiologist the location may not be equipped to handle specific requirements or emergencies related to anesthesia and the neuro team which consists of the anesthetist the neuro radiologist the surgeon and everyone else the technician and the nursing staff need to have perfect harmony and cooperation and communication because time is brain radiation protection is also important for all staff members as well as the patient and hence sometimes a pregnancy test is recommended in women of reproductive age it must be remembered that up to 2 liters of flush may be used during interventional neuroradiology and 300 ml of contrast agent may be used leading to various complications the anesthesiologist is responsible for ensuring avoidance of intracranial pressure both during and after the procedure and ensuring a smooth extubation with availability of, of icu or hdu care in the post operative team the peri or per procedural complications of such endovascular procedures can be divided into cerebrovascular complications or peripheral complications the cerebrovascular complications can be hemorrhagic or occlusive the hemorrhagic complications can occur in aneurysm procedures and can result in bleeding and rebleeding or sometimes vessel injury and rupture the occlusive complications include thromboembolism arterial dissection vasospasm and intravascular device or mitral migration the peripheral or systemic complications includes contrast induced complications and hemorrhage especially at the puncture site the cerebrovascular complications can be catastrophic and hence require a clear and rapid communication between the anesthetist and the operators the role of the anesthesiologist is to preserve the pulmonary gas exchange and maintaining mean arterial pressure autoregulation for vascular occlusion and intraoperative vasospasm the goal is to increase the distal perfusion by maintaining a mean arterial pressure of 30 to 40% above the baseline intraarterial thrombolysis can be attempted to achieve recanalization and prevention can be done with unfractionated heparin fluid flush and preoperative calcium channel blockers anesthesia for endovascular thrombectomy in acute ischemic stroke can be quite tricky because time is of essence in such situations for less than 4.5 hours since symptom onset iv thrombolysis can be considered but six and more we need to do endovascular thrombectomy and if there is any doubt please proceed with complete ga because sometimes if the patient becomes unconscious with local anesthesia and mild sedation we can lose the airway as well as lead to unstable hemodynamics the essence is to maintain a systolic blood pressure between 140 and 180 mmhg intracerebral hemorrhage can also be quite challenging 
as these patients can present with headache, nausea, vomiting and vascular pain in a conscious patient. But in a GA patient, you have to watch out for the hemodynamics for sudden bradycardia and hypertension and evidence of contrast extravasation on the fluoroscopy. The goal is to rapidly reverse the anticoagulation and induce transient hypertension. BP control can be done with use of antihypertensive agents or by deepening the anesthesia. Herniation syndromes are also quite catastrophic in such situations and the standard management includes hyperventilation, head elevation, steroids, IV mannitol and burst suppression along with ventricular drain or lumbar catheter and post-op ventilation. Subarachnoid hemorrhage is very common in such procedures especially in aneurysms and intracerebral hemorrhages can also be a complication. It can present with thunderclap headache, nausea, vomiting, neck stiffness and focal neurologic deficits and sometimes even ECG changes. Indications for sac rupture in an anesthetized patient include sudden onset of bradycardia and hypertension as well as contrast extravasation which is seen on the screen. The management is arterial pressure control by deepening the anesthesia and IV labitalol along with heparin reversal with protamine or sometimes even craniotomy. The management essentially involves increasing the collateral flow and thrombectomy with supportive therapy. There are several advantages and disadvantages of GA versus conscious sedation for such procedures. The pros and cons need to be understood very carefully, especially in relation to airway protection and control of hemodynamic and respiratory variables. Time delay is definitely there with GA, but yes, the advantages are immense. Conscious sedation also has several advantages in the form of reduced time delay and intraoperative neurologic monitoring being possible in a conscious patient. But the problems are risk of emergency conversion to GA, poor quality imaging with patient moving and the risk of aspiration. Now coming to magnetic resonance imaging, we all are aware of the four zones in an MRI. We need to understand that the magnetic field is always on and hence there is a risk of missile or projectile injury and fatal injuries have occurred both to the patient and the staff in such situations and when an MRI is a part of a hybrid suit all the staff need to be educated about the various problems associated with an MRI suit and there is also a risk of um, the bio effects of radio frequency field in the form of tissue heating and increase in core body temperature especially in infants and children. This is a picture showing the missile effect which can be quite dangerous and we need to routinely screen the patients before allowing them inside the MRI zone to prevent such ferromagnetic missiles. Still patient requirement to avoid motion artifacts may sometimes require giving GA to these patients and hence you must be very careful regarding the availability of MRI safe equipment and monitoring devices and anesthesia equipment. Airway hazards like loss of airway and difficult airway especially in children is very common if proper precautions are not taken. Acoustic noise can also cause uh, ear damage and hence availability of such headphones and earplugs is mandatory. There are basically these uh, three terminologies which most of us are aware of MRI safe, MRI conditional and MRI unsafe equipment and no leniency should be shown in the screening because that can lead to dangerous consequences. I would just summarize the hazards of uh, working in such environments especially when MRI and other uh, radiation equipment are there in interventional neuroradiology. The MRI scanner is associated with noise pollution, strong magnetic field and ferromagnetic missiles and delays due to remote positioning and induced currents and burns and dead space because of extra long breathing circuit and sometimes even failure to secure the airway in view of some emergencies. In interventional radiology, radiation exposure and limited mobility due to gowns worn by the staff is also a problem. Low lighting levels can also lead to depressed mood in the staff and restricted access and unexpected movement of the equipment and the angiography table also can lead to several injuries and hazards and allergic reactions due to contrast media and limited patient and airway access can be quite problematic for the anesthesiologist. In the endoscopy suit, the dark environment and limited access problems are again there with the risk of hemodynamic disturbance due to vagal stimulation and bubble preparation 
preparation and shared airway and hazards prone positioning the general issues are mainly these unfamiliar environments cold environment emergency equipment uh, not checked properly and lack of dedicated or trained assistance and protocols and impossibility or difficulty in scavenging anesthesia agents and volatile agents thanks a lot for your patient listening and really thank you so much for this golden opportunity jai hind